Hello and welcome back. My name is Adrian Cherry and this is part four in a series of recordings about using QCAD. What I'm doing here is using QCAD to draw up uh, artwork for getting some etchings done. And it's a Midland tender chassis and the side frames. I'm using a works drawing which is from Midland Engines Wild Swan publication on the class 3Fs. So what we've got here is the outline construction lines. Now we're going to start drawing the side frames themselves. So I'm going to change the layer. So on the right hand side where I've got my layer list, I select the outline. Next to the layers is a little eye. It shows whether it's visible. So zero was the construction line. If I click on the eye, you can see all of the construction lines disappear because it's then hidden. I'll turn it back on whilst we get the outline started. So going from the works drawing, well, first of all, centre of the wheels, the uh, kit I'm using is the uh, just like the real thing, but it had some discrepancies. So the actual box casting, so first of all, we need a hole in the outline for the wheel. So for that, we'll need a circle. So circle tools on the right on the left hand side and I'm going to define a center and radius. Now again this is where uh, because I'm using prototype I'm, I'm drawing 12 inches to the foot. The casting itself is a two millimeter diameter spigot on the axle box. Um, because I'm using 28 thousand metal it's about a 0.1 millimeter tolerance for the um, etching curve. So I want to draw a 2.1 millimeter hole. As I said in the earlier issues, you can actually type in. So I've got to convert the 2.1 millimeters from model scale up to full size. And as I said before, you can actually type in calculations. So here you can see under the radius for the circle. I define 2.1 millimetres and then if I times it by 12 for 12 inches in the foot and divide by 7, 7 millimetres to the foot of the scale I'm using, that finished circle is then prototype scale. So when it's etched, as you can see, if I hover around the centre of the circle, it comes up with reference and that's where I want the circle. So I'll just put in three reference circles and that's my centers for the axle boxes. As I said on the layer list if I hide the construction line you can see all, everything disappears apart from the three circles I've drawn because this is part of the outline now. So I'll turn the uh, construction lines back on we'll start drawing the outline of the frame Unfortunately, on the works drawing, it gives me a dimension from the rail head to the top of the frame. It actually says rail to top of frame four foot two and a quarter. So, what I want, if I go to the left hand side and back to my tools, back to the top level, I want a straight line. Um, I want a straight line auto so, quick quick straight line I want it parallel so parallel with distance so the distance that I need is four foot what did I say four foot two and a quarter so four foot in inches is forty eight two inches makes fifty and a quarter so my distance has to be 50.25 and I'll type that in the top. So now you can see wherever I hover near anything, whether it's a circle or a straight line, it draws a parallel line. If I hover below the railhead, it's below, above, above, and that's where I want it. So I'll hover the cursor above the railhead, and you can see down at the bottom, down here, it says left hand button choose line, arc or circle, right hand cancel. So 
I'll hover there, left hand button, click, and it's drawn me a line at the correct height. Now, to draw the bottom of the frame, there isn't a distance from the rail height, but there are a couple of distances from the top of the frame going down off the works drawing. This was, uh, what have we got, one foot two and three quarters, one foot two and four and three quarters. So basically, done a little bit of homework, added it up, it's two foot nine down from the top. Two foot is 24 inches, plus the nine, is uh, 33 inches. So my distance now, I want to make 33. And again, one copy. So again, it'll put a parallel line against anything. So it's the top one letter. So if I hover the cursor there, it puts a line there. Don't worry about it being too long at the minute. We're gonna trim all this up. This is just drawing the basic box to start with. Right, so the end pieces on the works drawing, it's actually got dimensions from the axle box centres. So what I'll do is I'll draw um, draw a vertical line from, and I'll pick the centre there, and you can see once I hover in the circle. It snaps straight to the centre, and I'll draw a line probably 30 inches high. So you can see there it comes just high enough up. So I'll put one at the front of the tender and one at the back. So I've put a vertical line from the centre of the wheel just high enough to cover the top of the frame. Again, QQ to quit that. What I want to do now is move these. So if I select the line, again, rather than finding all the button, the, the menu across the top, the modify menu has a move copy there. You've got a different one. You can rotate, you can move and make bigger and smaller, you can mirror. Um, and we'll come on to the trim functions later. So again, move copy, MV. Rather than clicking the button, I'll just type MV. The instructions down the bottom say, right, you've got to define a reference point. So we'll go to the end of the line, and I want to move it. What I want to do is uh, type in a number, so I'll press the space bar, and it gives, it, it will highlight the command line down here. So again, space bar to get the command line. And the front of the frame, according to the drawing, is four foot away, four foot 48 inches. So ampersand minus 48, because I want it to move to the left. And I want it to stay in the same position, zero. So you can see the lines appeared four foot to the left of that line, hit enter, I want to delete the original, okay, so that's moved that four foot that way. Now this one, again, MV to move, end point, space bar to enter the command line, and that's, what does that say, three foot eight. So three foot thirty six plus eight is forty four inches. So this time, ampersand to make it relative, and forty four inches along, zero inches up, and enter, and delete original. So now, I've got the line at the end of the chassis and the line at the front of the frame. Uh, final one for this bit of the outline around the axle boxes there are the drop down bit for the uh, axle boxes so we'll draw those in as well now that line 
according to the Luke's drawing, is three inches down. So I'll go back to a straight line, parallel line, type at the top, I want it three inches away. And you can see there, make sure I get it below, three inches down. So that's that. <coughs> and then that is, according to the drawing, two foot and a quarter either side. So again, I'll go to the straight line, I'll draw a vertical reference point, and I want it down by a bit. I don't know why. I'll do on minus 12 inches. Does that give us something? Yep. That'll be close enough, yep. Yeah. So again, it snaps to the reference point. It's on automatic. I can actually fix it to do automatic if I want. One, two, three. Now, that needs to move. So the, the whole width of the thing is two foot and a quarter. So if we select the first one, and again, MV to move, um, pick the end point as a reference, and then if we hit spacebar to enter the command, I want it two foot and a quarter is 20.25, but that's the entire width, so I'm only moving half of it. So I divide by two, and comma naught, and it's moved the line there. If I hit enter, I don't want to delete the original because I need another copy of the other side. So I'll just keep original for the minute and do that. So I now I've got two lines there. What I'll do now is repeat it for this. So again, middle line, MV, end point. Now when I hit enter and it goes to the command line, it's got a history of all of the commands. So rather than typing in the 20.25 divided by 2, comma naught and everything. If I just use the cursor keys and up arrow, you can see that the command line cycles through all of the commands that I've been using. Down arrow again to zero. So one, two, back. It gives me the, uh, the command that I've entered. So if I hit enter and keep original, Final point, uh, MV to move, end point, space to the command line, up arrow twice, and then to keep original. So let's put that aside. Then go back to this center line, MV to move, end point. Again, space bar to go to the command line up arrow a couple of times and I can edit it so the three that I've done have all been in the positive direction this time I'll move in the negative direction and this time I don't want the original left there so if I de delete original that goes there pick that one MV to move end point space bar up arrow twice, delete original, yep, third one, MV to move, end point, space bar, up arrow twice, and delete original. So now I've got the basic shape. So we'll come now onto the trim commands. Trim both. As I say, you can trim to a line, trim both, it'll extend both. So the red bits are showing what it will modify. So you can lengthen things, you can stretch, you can chamfer, round, all the rest. So on this, I'll use trim both. So if I, again, TM, or click on the button. So here, the instructions at the bottom says choose limiting en entity which is the line, so I'll pick that one, and then choose entity to trim, which I'll pick is that one. So you can see it cuts both lines. So again, choose limiting entity, 
and entity to trim. So we'll cut that one. Not only will it cut, but it will also extend the line downwards. So if I choose that line to cut to and extend, and on the other side and extend. So that's trimming the lines to the box that we need. Now, the other one is the smart trim, so you can either cut, you can auto trim between, or cut the bit out of the middle. So what I'll do is I'll use that breakout segment, and what it'll do there, as I say, you've got the option to remove the segment. So if I click on there, and there, and there, what you can see is it's removing the line in between the two points. So I'm just deleting the bits on the line that I don't want, and it trims automatically to the lines that we've got defined. So now the last bit is to trim around these actual box guides. So we'll go back to our uh, trim both. Again, if you start at this end, you've got to be careful about where you place the cursor because it works on the lines to trim. So if I click on that horizontal line there, and then if I click on the vertical line above that, it'll trim that way around, which is not what I want. So Command Z to undo. I'll click on the horizontal line and I'll click just below it. And again, horizontal line and in the middle. Just run through these quickly. Oops, wrong side there. Let's clear that so I can see what I'm doing. And trim both. That one down below. And there we have it. So now, if I turn off the construction lights, you can see that we've got the start of the outline. Next thing to do will be to create the curved cutouts in the centre and a bit of the detailing up at the edge but I think that can be saved for the next instalment.